now that I have a successful count, it's important to make sure you guys clean this stuff up. So I'm going to make sure all my trash is in the tip waste. I'm going to clean off the slide and the cover slip with ethanol. It's not really hard. If you want to do it before it gets all hard and nasty. Right, and that's all there is to that. Yeah. And then we're going to make sure we put the tip waste into our biohazard. Okay, so we're back. We know how many cells we have. Uh, interestingly, I counted a total of 870,000 cells in that flask. So my prediction of 800,000 to a million was pretty dang good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and seed half a ml into here, into our new flask. So this will just be our cells that we're going to keep growing out for the next experiment. That's the first thing we'll do. Right, so I'm going to make sure I mix these really well. Sometimes when the cells have been sitting when you're counting, they tend to follow gravity and go down to the bottom of that uh, the tube. So it's good to mix and make sure that you avoid that. So I'm being really careful about what's going on with my tip over there. I want to make sure this stays sterile. Push that in there. Mix it up well, and then we'll go ahead and put this in our incubator. Okay, so I've done all the math on what I want to do. So I have 12 wells in here. I'm going to put, I'm going to make a solution of 12 mils so that it represents one mil per well. But I'm only going to put 800 microliters in each well because I don't want to run out. I don't want to make 12 mils perfectly and try to do one mil each, and then it's not quite enough. Okay, so I was able to figure out that if I do that, I need uh, 150,000 total cells for my, for my 12 wells. So if I need 150,000 cells, I calculated based on my count uh, that it's about one mil. And so when I counted, it wasn't exactly 150,000 cells. It was like 145,000, I think. Uh, and I'm just not going to be, like, we don't care if we seed an exact number. We just need them to be all the same so we can compare. Right? So I'm, instead of trying to do, like, 1.03 mils, I'm just going to have one mil of the cell suspension, which is about 145,000 cells, plus... 11 mils of just media, and that will dilute, it will take 150,000 cells and put it into 12 mils of media, which is what I want to see down here. So I'm going to get the media first. Usually you would do the media first in this instance, uh, because then you put the cells into the media. So I'm going to get 11. I'm going to try to be pretty exact on this, as exact as the serological pipetter will allow. And now I'm going to get one mil. It's pretty convenient how one mil, this came, this suspension came out to be perfectly, I need one mil. And now from here on out, I'm going to be honest, like our sterile technique can be a little bit slack because uh, sterility is not that big a deal anymore, right? These cells I just got some out of, we're going to throw those things away anyway. Um, the cells that we're seeding in these wells, we're only going to seed them for uh, an hour and a half, and any contamination will not do much in an hour and a half. Like, it's not really going to affect the cells at all. I mean, maybe it was really bad, but it's not going to be that big a deal as if we had incubated overnight or something like that. Okay, so I just put the cells in there for now. I'm going to need to mix them before I put them on these gels. Um, but I'm not quite to that point yet because I need to aspirate off all the liquid first. 
And as I said, we're going to use uh, this to aspirate the liquid um, because the gels are going to want to be sucked up, uh, which will be a pain. And so this is actually a very difficult procedure to do. Um, and so I'll just kind of show you. And if you were doing it yourself, you would see how much of a pain it is. So again, I do want to try to be sterile as possible, but it's not the end of the day if I'm not. So I'm going to suck up all the control wells first because they're so easy. I do want to get as much liquid off as I can. Remember when I put uh, the PBS on here, I didn't perfectly measure out one mil. Sometimes it might have been less, sometimes it might have been more. So I'm going to do my best just to suck up one mil and I might have to go back a second time if necessary. So I'm going to start by sucking from the top, not sucking where the gel is. Go very slow. We've been tilting. Okay, I think we got that that one pretty good. By tilting, I can get all the liquid down into a corner and have the best chance of sucking it. So I suck, I got more than one mil in this well. I have to be careful not to touch the hydrogel. And if you're going with this aspirator, it'd be very impossible. So now I'm going to go ahead and change tips. Um, I did, actually did this in a good order where I may not need to change tips, but like I wouldn't want to contaminate one gel with another by accident, right? And so I did control first, then agros only second, and then agros plus gelatin third. So there's not really going to be much contamination of agros only to agros but gelatin. But if I did agros plus gelatin second and then went back here, I definitely want to change tips because I wouldn't want to get any gelatin into these agros only wells, even if it was just a little small chunk. Right, and so if you're doing different cases, usually you're going to change the tip between cases for most of the experiments you're doing. It is difficult to see where the hydrogel begins and the liquid ends or vice versa. Uh, some of these, the hydrogels may not be like stuck to the bottom as well as I had hoped. I think like the second one, the hydrogel is definitely floating a little more. But this third one, it's stuck to the bottom pretty well. So that will be this that will be a challenge with our second case here. Because if it is floating. Our cells can get under it easier, and that makes things a disaster, right? Then we didn't see as many cells as we thought on top. Okay, the others look pretty good. So as I push the second one down, like the liquid comes out from under it so I can suck it up. Okay, I've done probably as much damage as I want to do. Okay, so now we're going to want to put 800 mils into each of those. Before I do that, I'm going to take just a normal pet tip, and now I'm going to mix up my cells really well to make sure it's pretty homogenous. Pretty good. Okay, I want to be a little bit quick on this to prevent cells from settling. So you see my hand went over that. Um, that would be a huge no-no if I wanted to keep this 100% pure, um, but I'm not really at that point right now, so we're okay. Again, this is only going in there for an hour and a half. So I'm not making bubbles by pushing down to the second stop. I'm also trying to be gentle about putting it in there. 
hopefully keeping the liquid on top of the hydrogels rather than getting underneath so I'm not squirting with all my might. All right, so we've seeded 800 into each. So I, I just want to point out, like, if you're doing this for real, uh, trying to be sterile for a long-term culture, like, you've got to really be careful about, like, I would definitely have these, right, side by side. I might, you know, even do this, right? Take cap off, suck it up, cap on, take it out, push it in, right, every time. Take the cap off, suck it up, cap on, push it in every time, right? That way it limits our contamination. But as I said, an hour and a half is not going to be that big a deal. So we're going to go ahead and set our timer. And we'll stick these things in the incubator for an hour and a half.